Hey everyone, this is part two of the Polestar review. Now in this episode, we will be talking about the experience and also how the vehicle handles on the road. Uh, we will share what we like and don't like about the vehicle. And if you find the content useful, of course, please do like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, with that, please enjoy. Yeah, so the interior, how's the drive? The drive for us, I think amazing, yeah. right? Um, I think this is like uh, one of the few EVs that I've driven, like driven the Kona, the Model 3, mm. even the, the, the Blue SG, the mm. Q car. Uh, this one feels like uh, he has done a lot of work mm. with this uh, drive train, yep. right? And how it, it configures, right? Because um, especially when you step on on on, I want to say the gas pedal, yeah. like the accelerator, <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, you feel that he has definitely much punchier, right? Mm. I mean, that's the thing you expect with EV, yep. right? <clears throat> so it gives you all the power that you need, right? Um, what is that? 300 kilo. 300 kilo watts, I think. Right, yeah. Right, or I think, yeah. So it's massive of power. Yeah. Right. And you really get that. Um, so I think the handling all these are are, are fine. Mm. Right. Um, but one thing I have to. Okay, but uh, probably Go as ahead. a Model <laughs> Three driver, right? This is something I have to complain every day. Yeah. Turning radius. Yeah. Right. Uh, I think other car, it's fine. Right. But. Coming from a, like a Model 3 EV, mm. right, I don't get to turn as tight. Yep. And once you're driven like this one, right, you really, yeah, you feel like you can maneuver better. Yes. With tight, like tight corners or tight space, right? Yep. Uh, you don't need to do like a three point turn. Yeah, right? correct. Which is, and especially for this as a massive car, yeah. right, pretty wide, uh, you don't want to do too much of a three point turn. Yep. It's, a bit, uh, it's a very heavy car also, yep. right? So uh, I think it's a godsend. Like, yep. It can turn a bit tighter. Yeah. 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 I think. Um. Sorry, the aircon just went off. Let me get it back on. Yeah, turn it back on. I think because the battery is ten percent, they are yeah. limiting us. But yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I think someone told me that the Model Three can't turn, uh, really wide because of the battery the pack, battery pack. right? Yeah. Otherwise, eat into. Yeah. That battery space. Correct. Right. So, um, probably this one. What was that? Three eighty seventy eight kilowatt hour. Yeah, seventy eight right. kilowatts. Yeah, yeah, 78 and then I think 55 is for spare and regen. So yeah, so I agree with you, right? The model, the one thing for the Model 3, like, especially for city driving, um, if you spend most of your time in the cities and small streets, it's the radius is really not fantastic. And this car can do like, almost two full, uh, two locks, two full locks, four yeah. turns, and that's great. Uh, maneuverability wise, it's if you go inside a multi-story car park or like a basement uh, car park, it's yeah, it's it's nice. Even though it's it, it's a big car. And yeah. heavy. Um, when you go in, you can go into a very tight lot. I think that's fine. Like for Model yeah. Three, you have to yeah. do it a few times. Yeah, <laughs> so you can do a two-lane U-turn. Yeah, right. Correct. So no problem. Yeah. So yeah. driving-wise, I think it, it's responsive. Like if, if you came from an ice and a hybrid, uh, when you step on this accelerator, oh, yeah. you're gonna feel it. The yeah, punch is, yeah. it's yeah. there. Uh, but there's a bit of a there's a bit of a latency when you yes. just a millisecond, but you feel it, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, if you come from a Tesla, yeah. then you'll feel it immediately. Yeah. You get that lag yeah. in response when you like uh, accelerate, mm. right? It goes, right? Yeah. But then it's like when you press it, you wait yeah. a bit and then it, it goes. Right. So uh, that could be improved. Uh, yeah. here, right? Because when, uh, given that it has so much power, Correct. when you want it to go, it goes. It right? goes so yeah. it does go, but that lag, right? Yeah. It's something that they can. Yeah, really it's almost like a, like, a, like a sink. Like mini of a like out of sync a little bit like when you you step on it yeah. it's just like then the sound comes up yeah so it's one of those things that we that most of us who have tried the car so far we felt that that's one of those things yeah. uh, but again like I said like if, if you're coming from a traditional car this is gonna feel really responsive like um, the friends who sat in the car mm. um, they love it they love the fact that it, it just goes right so fast and they're, yeah. they're screaming in the car just as they would have <laughs> screamed in the, yeah. in the Model 3. Yeah, they won't feel it. Now uh, your passengers will enjoy the ride. Uh, it's yeah. 4.7 seconds car, it's fast. Yeah. It's way yeah. more and than enough. Yeah, 5 is, yeah, yeah. it's much. Yeah, it's really good. It's faster than the SR Plus, right? Uh, it's faster yeah, than the SR. Yeah. But this is a dual motor. This is a dual motor, right, so, so it's supposed to compete with the, yeah. yeah. 
Um, yeah, driving wise, uh, yeah, um, flying spots. Oh, yeah, same thing with what you mentioned, the glass. Yeah, the sighting. Yeah. Stuff. So I think just now during your drive, we've had the. Op- it was still we were like lucky that there was not much traffic. Pretty light, yeah. Not much light. large lanes. Um, those are fine. But once you go into tighter spaces, then you, you can't really see much of the car. Uh, you've got to rely on the 360 camera. Yeah, actually yes, like we were on Lonnie and there's yeah. quite a stretch like at the beginning which right. is quite tight. tight right. Yeah, so when you change lane, you kind of yeah. need to see over your shoulder. Sure. Um, then I feel like this is a bit in the way, yeah. right? But then I also realized that it has the indicator, the blind spot. The blind spot indicator, yeah. So which helps also. Correct. And I like the mirror, the yeah. frameless mirror. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. yeah the frame- frameless mirror is it's quite a cool feature. Yeah, uh, it's nice to have like because even for our our model three that we don't have the blind spot. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, we don't have that. Uh, but having said this, Singapore traffic, you most likely probably be on, <laughs> be all, on the all the time. Yeah, <laughs> throughout your drive. Uh, yeah, so I think that's what the drive the I like. I really like the turning radius. It helps with everyday driving. Even though it's a big car, you can maneuver it just fine. Yeah, yeah. Acceleration is it drives like an EV, uh, honestly. Yeah, most EVs it drive like an EV. Um, so when you drive an EV, right, yeah. my expectation that it's gonna be powerful, it's gonna be responsive. Yeah, this one feels like okay. So like when you drive, EV, I feel like it should be like a a part of you when you want uh, when you want it to go, it goes. Right. When you want it to turn, it yeah. turns Sense. the radius like the radius or the right. uh, level of agility that yeah. you should. So I think this car can deliver it yeah. right but with a few like um lag again in yeah. the, so it's like you want it to go and then it doesn't go immediately so yeah. i think these are things that are not critical sure but uh as an ev yeah. i think it really delivers that yeah. sort of like okay the, the expectation of what people think ev is yeah right? correct yeah so i think aside from that right small other small issues uh that in a car is i um i don't like the fact that the steering wheel the weight um, uh, it's dynamic uh, so when you're at low speeds um, or in a car park they're going to give you more assist as you speed up uh, it gives you the, it gives better weight to you yeah. but then because the car is fast and if you go from a standstill and you really accelerate right. the car the first half a second your steering wheel is like you don't get the weight yeah right and so it feels, by weight you mean the resistance the resistance all right so it's, it's it, there's a lot of assist mm. and it's light yeah. And you don't want to have a light steering wheel when yeah. your car is going so fast. Yeah, yeah so those, that's one thing that I feel that maybe they could tweak it um, down the road. Uh, something maybe more linear. Uh, yeah. But this is, I, I feel this is preference. Mm. Uh, but the car is fast. Uh, if it's light, it feels it like it's, to, yes. it, Yeah. You almost feel the lift off when they... Yeah, when and they you say it. that you can't turn it off, right? Correct, yeah, you can. You can even make it like, even more like lighter. You can't go any heavier. It's, right. it's on firm. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, that's for the driving. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I think when it comes to EV yeah. sort of driving, right, there's really not much to talk about mm. because you, like people expect the power, yeah. like, the agility, and being an EV, yeah. right? This car deliver it. Correct. Yeah, you can just say like, Actually, I, f- I feel it all right. Yeah. Although, although we are just now we are driving under yeah. like fifteen percent yeah. battery, but the, correct. Yeah, the power is still there. Uh, one more thing. There were two things actually. The one pedal drive. And the um, regen. One pedal, no, there was something else. But anyway, I forgot the other one. One pedal drive. Yeah. How's the one pedal drive on this car? Uh. Yeah. The okay because I drive another EV like the yeah. Model Three, right? Uh, it takes a bit of time to get used to the mm. sort of uh, what we call like the biting point. Yeah. Right. Of the drive. Mm. So it's a bit different. Yeah. Right. But once you get the hang of it, mm. right? And again, it's like getting. To learn about the car, yeah, right, and then to be part of the car, right, yeah. and then once you sync up, right, you can drive pretty well. So, uh, as an EV driver, no problem for me. Mm. But I would assume that someone that comes from an ICE vehicle, yeah, probably take a bit, like maybe two or three trips to get used yeah, to that whole yeah. one pedal drive. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So the one pedal drive uh, in this car works a little bit more like a hybrid. So when you let go of the accelerator and then you depress the hybrid brakes, when it comes to a complete stop. Mm. Um, like all hybrids, the brakes clip in yeah. as you reach maybe the 10 km per hour, 5 km per hour range. So the same for this car. Mm. So it has regen and both the brake calipers right. biting into the car at the same time. Mm-hmm. So if you release your accelerator pedal all the way, you're going to have a light jerk when the brakes bite. Right. Especially under wet weather, when your brakes okay. are very clean, yes. yeah, it's going to bite. It's going to be even more okay, aggressive. Yeah. So you have to control the accelerator pedal a bit more so that mm. you don't get that jerk. 
but it's more of, it's just how they've done it and once you get used to it you're not going to experience the drug anymore yeah yeah it's it's pretty much how most i think enthusiasts or reviewers have always been criticizing hybrids or the toyota hybrids when they drive yeah towards the end of the, yeah. the break there's a bit of a jerk and yeah. that's just you having to learn how to get used to yeah. the yeah so that was the thing that i'm trying to say also like yeah. it's a bit of a learning curve there to yeah. kind of know what that level is mm. and different cars different level although they all experience that same yeah issue right yeah so by maybe a few drive you get getting used to that coming to a stop how you should present uh, how much you should depress the brake right yeah. uh, the accelerator that um yeah i don't think it's like a critical problem like it's not a make or break okay? yeah right yeah uh, anyways it's your car you're gonna drive every day you buy this car so you will get eventually used to it. get used to it yeah correct yeah so i think that's that's pretty much that for driving there was one more but i've lost it uh, off my head so 360 cam yeah 360 cam anything you have on that <laughs> yeah uh i mean i can see what they're trying to do right yeah. i was trying to draw out the immediate Correct. radius of yeah. the car but yeah it's a bit too stretched out or maybe like yeah. this it looks okay when things pass by yeah, or it's like a car behind let's move in front to see the van yeah. so yeah it's pretty stretched out yeah yeah, it yeah, looks yeah, more like a bin than uh, yeah, <laughs> than the van. Yeah, but yeah, kind of can you can gauge the the distance, right? Yeah, it's fine. But I think I've seen better implementation. I probably think the BYD. Yeah, uh, yeah, can give a better representation of like much accurate sort of. Than what you really space. see at yeah. the, in a spatial awareness. Correct, yeah, correct. okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so one more thing about the parking is uh, I think right now uh, Posta also knows of this and uh, the Singapore team. Right. Yeah, so the um, parking, especially in tight spaces um, like in our country, right? Um, if you're too close to the curb or there's like tall grass yeah, yeah. or <laughs> bushes behind you, yeah. uh, to, while you're parking the car, it's fine. Like yeah. you, you think there's way a lot, there's a lot more space, but then the car thinks that you're going to hit something yeah. and it's going to slam on the brakes and it's very abrupt. It almost feels like you've. Um, knock into something okay so which is fair which is what the, the e-brakes trying to do right yeah. trying to save you because it thinks that maybe it's a solid Correct. metal there but yeah. okay but in hindsight it's a like a grass which you can probably go back into right? yeah correct so i think uh posa to knows of this mm -hmm. uh they feedback to the team uh to the main hq team and they, they, they will look at it because i guess um some of the guys who have reviewed the car has also told them that this this exists mm. so they, they're open to it and they're going to, to do some changes yeah. uh hopefully in in some time because it, it hits you quite a few times like about 50 percent of your parks is going to apply the e-brake yeah. and it's a bit unnerving especially on your first two times yeah or three times like, even then you should not be expecting your car to do an e-brake yeah yeah, yeah so, i mean the, if a fee safety feature that turns on almost like 50 yeah. percent of the time there's the correct feature. and Same. to be fair uh right now they're saying that you can actually turn that off but it's only for that particular drive it's a car in oh, park. so every drive you have every to drive you've got turn to turn it off how do i do this in park yeah. then let's drive again yeah. yeah so you can yeah. turn this off yeah you can turn real auto brake and yeah, you turn it off and real brake will turn on until next drive. Mm. Yeah, so it's pretty much like the sound and safety features uh, we have in the Model 3 or so. You can turn it off for the drive, but then the next drive it yeah. comes back on. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I mean, it's decent. Yeah. 360. Yeah. So, yeah. Hey guys, so one thing we did not really touch on in the chat uh, was the range of this vehicle. Uh, I wanted to give this a little bit more emphasis because uh, I think range anxiety for anyone who's getting an EV is definitely something that comes to mind. So the the car comes with a 78 kilowatt hour battery of which uh, only 73 uh, kilowatts are usable. Now I took this vehicle on Friday at 100% and I drove it to 6% when I charged, when I plugged it in. Now uh, I drove about 290 kilometers that means I used up 94% of the batteries for 290 kilometers. Uh, that puts this vehicle cons consumption at about 220 to 240 watt hours per kilometer. Uh, that is not the most efficient uh, range you can get. 
uh, and Polestar also recommends that you charge this battery up to 90% instead of 100%. So this means that if you're driving this on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, you will be the usable battery range is 90% to 10%, which means you will be getting around uh, maybe 240, 260 um, of range out of your battery pack. So if you're only going to use a public charging infrastructure, then you're going to pull into a charger quite often unless uh, you drive a little less. So I thought this is something quite important that we have to mention uh, for the dual motor variant. Uh, yeah, so if you do not have home charging, this is something that you should consider. I uh, hope this review was helpful and I will see you guys in the next one.